All right, thank you. I promise I'm not going to preach. I haven't felt the call yet. <laughs> and I so rarely get an opportunity to stand up here and talk to you guys with the microphone, so you guys are in trouble. Um, <laughs> so, Elijah, if you want to put that camera filter on that makes me look pretty, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, so um, we had the opportunity to go to the wilds, and if any place other than this place that is really being used of God, it is that place. I feel personally in my heart that if God decided that he wanted to come to earth and dwell, that he would probably live there, <laughs> or if not, it'd be at least in his top ten. But anyway, so just the people there and just the staff and all the workers and the counselors, everybody there has such a heart for God that you really feel his presence and you really feel him working. And it's just a great opportunity, and I challenge every one of you guys that if you have time off and they're doing a retreat and it's one for you, just take the opportunity because I've been there a few times now, and every time I've gone, God has given me exactly what I needed right at the time I needed it. And so it was really good. We had um, a special speaker, Joe Fant. He actually is, I think, the program director of the Wilds in North Carolina. And he came up, and I didn't realize it at the time, but getting to talk to him, we actually had a mutual buddy in college that he was pretty good friends with, so we got to talk a little bit about that. But um, his theme for the weekend was actually wholehearted devotion, and wholehearted devotion to God. And the, he had like four main sessions, and it was going to be um, what that was, what it looked like lived out, what it didn't look like, and how you could do it. Um, and the first session that really stuck out to me was, um, you know, what was wholehearted devotion? And he started with that. And he also brought up the point that for that weekend, he wanted us to be transparent with him, and he would be transparent with us, which meant that he was going to be perfectly real. He was going to be honest. He was going to just let us know what he had issues with. You know, we had the opportunity to talk to him and pick his brain for, you know, whatever was troubling us. So you can feel like the real genuine love from God and the passion that he had in what he was preaching. So anyway, the first session, he brought out the illustration of the woman who came to Jesus and brought the alabaster box of ointment and broke it over his feet. And he pointed out the fact that, um, that she didn't break it so that she could patch it up again. She said this was an item that was very, very precious to her. Um, she was willing to sacrifice, and she had sacrificed for it. And, you know, in that day and time, it probably cost her tens of thousands of dollars. So it was worth a lot, you know, it was worth a lot to her. And she brought it to Jesus, and she didn't break it to where she can take the corner and just pour out a little bit and make him smell nice and wash his feet. She broke the whole thing open. There was no opportunity to repair. And it really stressed to me that... What she did is she sacrificed it all. She gave herself. She just poured it all out, and that was what her gift was for Jesus. And he pointed out the fact that she was forgiven much because she loved much. And um, that was one of the things that stood out um, for me. And just the opportunity. He gave us um, a chance to do God and I time, which is where we had a session, and then he gave us a passage, and he's like, for the next half hour or so, study this passage out, and just really take what we've given you so far, and, you know, just use the direction, and just um, apply it. So the passage was actually Ephesians 1, and I have all my stuff up here, because I'm not as industrious as Marissa, and I didn't write everything down, I was lazy. So, <laughs> so the passage was Ephesians 1, and the verses that really stuck out to me is there, in the beginning parts of the passage, Paul is really addressing you know, why he is, you know, why he's writing, what his, you know, what the calling is, and, you know, kind of addressing the, the saints there. And it, when it gets down to verse um, 17, then he kind of switches it up a little bit. And since the, the whole theme for the weekend was how to live your life wholeheartedly devoted to God, you know, including your devotion time, I was kind of looking at it from that standpoint. And it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. 
And that's where I kind of stopped right there. And um, I'm not a biblical scholar by any means, and they kind of gave us guidelines, so I didn't want to ruin the... Uh, ruin the moment or the opportunity by like googling everything on my phone what does this mean so pastor always says that you know common sense you know so I kind of looked at it that way it's like God will give us and give is the continual process the spirit of wisdom and this is when we're doing our devotions and when we're trying to learn more about him and revelation that we will understand more of what he is saying about himself that our eyes will be enlightened open or he'll give us clarity that we can know what is the hope of his calling or what his purpose or will is for our life um, and the inheritance that he has waiting for us and what is his super awesome in magnitude exceeding greatness of his power to us, the believers, according to the working of God, his power through Christ, which he, sh which he showed when he raised him from the dead, thus giving us the opportunity for life everlasting with him. And I just want to say that it was an amazing weekend, and on the way home, we just couldn't stop talking about what we learned and how we were ready to apply it. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to go.